Outdoors and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. Got a little car we got to go take a look at and it's a Hondo and I left the guy riding the old Shoe Leather Express all the way back home. He stopped in uh, yesterday and said he had a little bit of noise but couldn't really explain it very well. Uh, just kind of under the hood on the driver's side. Didn't really change much with speed or anything. It was kind of all over the place with what is, uh, you know, kind of describing this noise. So I said, well, sure, you know, drop it off tomorrow. We'll, we'll have a look. Well, today is tomorrow, and it got dropped off last night, evidently, on a flatbed. Uh, he says he's driving. Noise went away. The next thing you know, he's walking. And now it won't turn over, won't do anything, I guess. So he had a toad here. So we're going to go outside and see what the heck is going on with this thing. or something like that, I imagine. Uh-oh. You guys recognize that sound? Let's have a quick listen again. Uh-oh. The little rubber band under the hood broke. That's no good. Let's see, what do we got? 165.04 on the clock. And it sounds like this beast broke a timing belt. That's a pretty characteristic sound of a broken timing belt. No compression. Well, we can see a rocker arm down the oil hole. So we'll set the uh, camera up, look in the uh, Oil hole, see if the rocker arm's moving. I am 99% certain that it is not. And we broke the timing belt. That's the oil fill hole. See if we can zoom in here and take a look at this uh, rocker shaft. On a good engine, that rocker shaft's gonna be bouncing up and down. It ain't gonna be doing nothing on this car, I bet. Well, there you have it. Proof's in the pudding. Well, that's it, viewers. It's all over but the crying now. Best thing to do at this point, the belt cover's gotta come off to do the job. Well, the first best thing to do is call a customer and give them the bad news, but uh, we gotta take it one step further. We gotta yank the valve cover, so that way there we can gain access to the cam pulley, so we can turn the, turn the cam over, close the valves, Put a little air in each cylinder, do a quick leak down check, make sure it didn't smack any of the valves. Typically these engines don't. Uh, I'd have to look to even see if they're considered an interference engine or not. I, I, I think they are, but very rarely have I ever seen one of these actually you know, hit the valves. So that would be the next step. Verify the engine's good if it's good. Give them a quote on a belt and then flush this baby. So I just walk in to tell Mrs. O about uh, the Civic here and to get this customer's number. I told her the timing belt broke. And I just got reminded why I married this girl. I said, Mrs. O, the timing belt broke. First question out of her mouth, would he crash it? She wanted to know if he crashed the motor. That's a woman right there. <laughs> Seriously, what kind of girl asked that question? You know, did it hit the valves? And have a concerned look. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, we took and pushed it in here. Picked it up in the air so we could work on it a little bit. When the Chevy the other day, we had to take the wheels off so we can work on it. These little Hondas, we gotta pick them up so we can work on it. Uh, we'll pull the uh, valve cover off here. Take this cover off, pull the coil packs out, I'm gonna breathe your hose, whatever else we have to do here to get the valve cover loose so we can get to the end of the cam. Hopefully, because I believe that upper timing cover half comes off. We we'll spin this thing over, make sure it didn't whack any valves, leave any little eyebrow marks on top of the pistons. And then we'll give this guy a proper estimate, see if we get the job. So I was just grabbing this little air ratchet that I like to use. It's the uh, Astro 1128, that little 3 8 50 foot pound, uh, super small impacting air ratchet. And it reminded me that I'm opening a Amazon store because a lot of people all the time are asking me, hey, what was that, uh, what was that air ratchet used? Or what was that 
you know, ball joint press or what, it, you know, they asked me a lot of questions is what it is, where can I get it, where can I get a pair of pliers like that? So I'm opening an Amazon store and I'll put a link down in the description of the tools that I use. So you can just click on that link. You can go right there and uh, purchase the tool if you want. wiring harness came apart back here. back here which is always pretty snug. through the bell cover too. Set this bracket for this AC in your power steering line over here. That hooked to the valve cover, I think. I don't know. Yeah, it did. Okay, it should be in good shape. I'm gonna pull this bracket. A lot of times doing the bell covers on these, if you're beating the book, you never pull the valve cover all the way. So you guys just loosen up the five bolts and kind of wedge them up, get the upper cover, upper timing cover off, and then do the belt job and then set the valve cover back down. But in this case, we, we have to pull it because we've got to verify that this engine is good uh, before we even quote the timing belt job. So we can't get under here to uh, Break the seal on this beast. off a couple of things you're coming up off the gasket um, and your uh, spark plug tube seals here so there's uh, definitely some areas in which it can be held on pretty pretty snugly can't really get to the back of the thing so let's try to work it here a little bit from the front it is just aluminum so 
Don't go full gorilla on it. Only half gorilla, you only need half gorilla. There we go. I think we're loosey goosey. some of this dirt off here. Now we gotta be super careful. Ah, gas gets stuck. There. <laughs> the NFL cover is super stuck. Got that baby from a viewer, all the way from Alaska. Baked. All right, get that out of there. Not that we had to worry about that falling in the engine. One thing in kind of, you know, quick visual inspection, usually if it whacked a valve in the down position, you'll have a you'll have a rock arm that's like crazy loose because the valve will be down and then peened over. But like I say, these aren't common to, to whack the valve. You gotta pull the valve cover. You're supposed to pull the valve cover to do the uh, timing belt job. So, you know, it's not like we're wasting any time uh, doing this. I'm gonna yank the spark plugs out. We'll go down on one cylinder at a time, make sure it's good. One thing we gotta do though, before we get too far, we gotta pull this upper timing cover. Looks like we got three bolts on that. We got a bolt there, there, and one over here. It's kind of harder to get to. You can see it down in there. I'll grab a ratchet. socket. Let's put the socket on it first. See if we can hit it with a square here now, just the tip of it. <laughs> eh, close, close. <laughs> ah, man, I'm not winning here. Let me give this a little stubby extension. confirmation of our diagnosis. What a mess. So there's our timing belt. Hope you guys can see that. She's a schmidge on the shredded side. I don't know if we can put this thing up out of there. I'd like to get it out before we start cranking on it too much. We're not going to be cranking the engine over, so I guess it doesn't matter. Ah, she's wedged. Yeah, now you did it. Oh well, yeah, she's stuck down in there. We don't need to crank it over anymore, anyways. Uh, always cut towards your buddy, not your body. All we're interested in. Let's turn this camshaft over. There's the remnants of the belt. Ooh! 
squeaky. It's probably original plugs too. Oh, that one is loose. That one is loose. That one wasn't too bad. Not too bad, only. Number four, she was the Must be from the VTEC. Always look at these for mechanical damage too. Well, they all look good. Electrodes smashed over. You do just a quick visual inspection down the holes. Usually if the uh, valve hits, and leave a nice little eyebrow on the piston. You know, perfect little eyebrow shape. And that's bad news bears. They look good. From what I can see, let's grab a leak down tester. We'll flick the valve shut on each cylinder. Give her a little shot of air. And see if they hold. We'll start right here on the number one. You know, all my rocker shafts are really loose. So we know all four valves are closed. We'll screw our leak down tester on here. This rear set of rockers, those are super loose. And that's way more than, I don't know, what's the exhaust slash in these? 10,000, something like that probably? I don't know. Uh-oh, people. That's a schmidge on the loose side. That's way too loose. And we've got, what, 90% leak down on that cylinder. That's kind of surprising, I'll be honest with you. I can't say I've ever seen one of these engines hit valves. I wonder how many people flip out because I was cranking it over out in the parking lot. The fact of the matter is that that doesn't matter because this guy was driving down the road when it happened and he cranked it over a bunch himself, so that's really kind of redundant. Plus you have to crank a car over to figure out what's wrong with it, so. Now this one, number two cylinder here, that feels about right. That feels pretty good. I'm sure this cylinder will be okay. Yeah, when these babies break, it doesn't matter. You know, some people are like, well, I was only driving in town. It probably didn't hurt it. Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what speed you're going. If the engine's running, it's running. It's on is on, off is off. This one here has some leak down too. It's blowing out this cylinder here. I don't know if it's uh, leaking out the intake or the exhaust. Kind of open and close these valves here a little bit. Oh, that one's tight. Up against the piston there. what way we can move this thing depending on what way this uh, you know, leak down tester is going to move the pistons around. Okay, that's opening up the intake valve, must be. Yep. Can't go that way. Feel it touching. All we can do is go back. Loose, 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 huh? It's still showing 40% leak down on this cylinder. Let me uh, grab a hammer. Oops, yeah, wrong cylinder, dummy. <laughs> Yeah, we're 
we're still at 40% leak down there. Must have touched one of them pretty good. I mean, at this point, realistically, we can we can call it. We can take and move on here. We'll just check the rest of them, see if we got any good cylinders. This one's obviously really bad right now. We'll check number three here, but I'm afraid the damage is done. Got to yank the head off this baby. I don't know if the pistons are in a spot that we can turn this over yet or not. I might have to move the crankshaft a little bit. That's the exhaust stroke. to uh, rotate the crank. Let me grab, I'll see if we can just rotate it from the power steering here. Should be able to. Got the spark plugs out, shouldn't be a big deal. Yeah, let's move the crank shaft a little bit. Okay, those valves are closed, closed. So all four of those rock arms have play. Throw some air in that cylinder. Boy, she got touched too, man. That is crazy. Well, yeah, here we are. All, uh, all four rockers are loose. You know, realistically, pist piston position at this point uh, is redundant. Uh, whether the piston's up or down, uh, the, you know, the piston's gonna seal in the cylinder at any given point, technically, you know, enough to do enough to do this test, but this thing must have hit every valve. And by tapping on it, you know, with the hammer here, that just kind of gives it the benefit of the doubt, you know, if there's a little piece of trash or something in the valve seat, you know, she'll come. She's toast. Just for the sake of experiment, I gotta say this is the first, um, you know, uh, one seven that I've seen hit the bells, man. I've done. If I wasn't doing a YouTube video, realistically, I probably would have just hung a bell on it. Good thing I didn't. I'd have got slid. You know, it's like these and the neon. These things come in. And, you know, they crap a belt. You just, sometimes you can throw a belt on it faster than you can do a leak down test. Okay, we got uh, all four of these rocker shafts are loose. That one's loose. The exhaust is loose, or er, intake. <laughs> Have I been saying this all wrong? Exhaust, intake. Well, I'll be jiggered. She is a junk ski. Well, it may be time to lead this old horse to the pasture. Because, well, I don't know if he wants to put the money into it to pull the head or not. My wrench back here. I wonder, I'm gonna spin one of these rotate this a little bit, see if we can see if we can get this down. Oh. I see the beauty mark on number one now that I got the piston down. I don't see it on that cylinder. That might be a little smudge on there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure here on the number one. Yeah, I think I can see a smudge. I can grab my little video scope there and see if we can look down in there. All right, let's see. I don't have a, uh, I don't have the correct cable for the video output to display it up on a monitor. So we'll see if we can just look at it on this. 
don't know what you guys will be able to see, but we already, I mean, we already, we already know what's going on, but we'll see if we can't see what is happening. And it's pretty obvious. Once you look in there with this little guy, then we can see perfect little, perfect little marks on top of the piston. Let's see if I get this bent in the right direction here. Hooked up here, get it where I can hold it, uh, hold it steady. Hopefully, let you guys have a little peek here when I'm looking at. So this one, whack. That faces the intake, so let's say yeah, it says in right on top of the piston. So whack the intake valves. Let me see if I can face this back more towards the exhaust. We can have a look at the exhaust valves because if we remember right, those were those were worse. So it's kind of cumbersome to use here sometimes. So this here will be my best attempt to show you what I'm looking at. I know this is really kind of cheesy, but let me get something to point with. So what we're looking at is the top of the piston, basically. And you see the, this little mark right there. And then I don't know if you can see it on, on your screen or not, but this little mark right down there at the bottom. They're not actual distinct little eyebrow marks on this one but you can see where it says in on top of the piston you know it's facing the intake valve i believe and we can see where the uh, valves have dug into the top of the piston there and left their little left their little tattoos for us it's kind of a little bit more proof i gotta make the phone call tell him this guy doa of course he already knows she's dead let them know what happened. I still am a little bit baffled that it hit the hit the valves. Like I say, I I don't even know how many of these I've done. I've never seen one <laughs> hit the valves. But oh well, it is what it is. You know, when that belt breaks, it only breaks when the engine's running. You know, regardless if it breaks, you know, in your in your driveway when you go to start it the next day. You know, as soon as you hit that key. You know, damage is done. I mean, one one revolution. You know, 720 degrees of crankshaft revolution. Everything's moved and hit, and it's all over. But the crying at that point. So, crank it in the parking lot. Turn it over in here. She's already toast. It, uh, it broke a long time ago. Before I got here, I'm sure he cranked it. It was driving. The tow truck driver. Everybody cranked it. It is what it is at this point. So this may be part one of a multi-part head series, but with 164 or whatever is on it, I don't know. Uh, it's up to the customer at this point. It's a spendy job. You know, you're looking at uh, pulling the head. So you got your headset, your head bolts, all your valves. More than likely, I doubt any of the valves are gonna be reusable. Your machine shop labor, you know, mill and tank and pressure test and valves and valve job. You know whether or not it needs guides or any of that stuff that's all speculation until you pull it apart little marks in the pistons i've never seen them cause any damage or give any problems then we have our you know our time and component kit your time and belt and your idler tensioner water pump so on and so forth you can easily stack up you know you're you're pushing two grand here by the time you get this all said and done you know you get an older civic like this it might be time to recycle this beast into a new one it's up to him. I'll let you know what he says. I'll go call him now and see where we're going to go with this. I'll take and leave Sheba in charge out here just in case anybody comes in. She'll guard the, guard the car. Right, Sheba? Sheba? Right? You're protecting the place, are you? No? She's not very vicious. That's it. It's going to the scrap heap. Just got done eating lunch and uh, getting sicker as the day goes on here. Uh, he called back and he, you know he recognizes that the car is not even not even worth the value of the repairs. So time to move on with life and do whatever he's going to do with that. Whether he's going to scrap it or just sell it as is, it's up to the customer. It's not up to me. He's going to just pay me for my diagnosis and see you later. So there won't be a part two on that. Sorry. But uh, I can't change that, nor am I willing to just pay for it out of pocket. 
At any rate, check us out on Facebook and Google Plus if you haven't yet, if you want to connect with us socially there. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't, if you want to stay up to date with our latest publications. Don't forget to go check out uh, the links below in the description so you can see our new Amazon store and, and uh, we'll you know, continually add stuff as you guys ask for it to be added there or looking for certain items and uh, want to kind of help support the South Main Auto channel by purchasing through there. Uh, that's really helpful. We really appreciate it. So just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.